been quite a wild week, but you've been in the news. You yourself the last couple of days with some reports about maybe some advising being done with Vice President Biden's campaign. What's the deal? Oh, I wouldn't overread things. Uh, the Vice President and I have been friends for a long time, and I'm one of many, many people who his campaign talks uh, talks to, but I don't have any formal relation of any kind to his campaign. Okay, let's go on to some of the events of the week. A lot of them had to do with getting the economy started again, with Georgia getting out in front, actually opening up some businesses just today. The question is, are we going too fast? Have we really prepared for this? Do we have, and particularly the focus is on testing, do we have the testing we need? I'll bet Georgia is going too fast, and I'll bet that's going to prove to be a dangerous mistake. But that's not the really important uh, thing, David. The really important thing is that we need to spend macro money on the micro health issues. This thing is costing us $80 billion a week, more than $10 billion a day. Anything that we do that accelerates the pace at which the economy can reopen, that creates a more normal environment more quickly, will pay for itself many times over. But we're not throwing money at every possible approach to testing. We're not simultaneously building the manufacturing capacity for tests or vaccines that might work, but we don't know yet. What we need to do is spend money that we know some of it will end up being wastefully uh, spent so that we're ready to go with anything that works, a vaccine, a treatment, um, a test uh, for evaluating, and we're just not spending money in that kind of way. We're throwing infinite amounts of money at leveraged firms that are over levered and are having a tough time right now, but we are under investing on a very large scale in the health investments. The truth is the highest payoff health investments in moving the economy forward aren't in stimulating the economy. They're in bringing forth the necessary health infrastructure in terms of tests, contact tracing, treatments, and ultimately vaccines. And that's where we should be heavily uh, investing and concentrating, and we're not, just, we're not doing it. It's business as usual. It's the fact that we underspent on pandemic preparation that is why we're in this catastrophic mess and we still haven't gotten past the error of under investing in health relative to other things think about it this way if we move this forward by one day the extra tax revenue that will feed into the government budget will be more than $3 billion. At that price, yeah. how could we not be investing in every possible experiment and yeah. parallel processing yeah. everything, knowing that yeah. even if we have some redundancy, even if we have some uh, waste, it will be small compared to the benefits. In the meantime, this week, Larry, of course, Congress appropriated another uh, almost half a trillion dollars, 100 billion of it was to go for hospitals and testing. The rest of it was for small business. Uh, one of the big questions now is what about the states? Because the states are hurting pretty badly. We're hearing this from any number of governors. At the same time, the majority leader, Mitch McConnell, came out and said, you know what? I think some of these states should go uh, bankrupt. We should just let them go bankrupt. What do you think of that? I think it's madness. Why should we be spending hundreds of billions of dollars to support the junk bonds of companies that somebody bought up, levered up, and took a lot of money out, and not spending money helping inner cities where people are dying? Why should, when we talk about investing in America, look, you can argue both sides of whether this is a moment to expand infrastructure. But on what possible theory is this a moment for state and local governments to be slashing their maintenance budgets? On what 
possible theory should the federal government not step in and compensate states and localities for this disaster. Look, you could, and these arguments existed and were had during the financial crisis, you can discuss moral hazard, you can discuss whether it really should be ultimately localities' own responsibility. But at a moment when we are supporting every investment in every uh, direction with trillions of dollars expansion in the national debt, how could it possibly be that schools for children, police, depart police departments, maintaining basic infrastructure and roads, supporting local hospitals. How could that be the one thing that isn't a priority? And then for Mitch McConnell to suggest that, well, they should just go uh, bankrupt is as bad as the suggestions that, in its way, that aged people should just be left to die uh, in uh, the streets. This is not some liberal idea. This is just common sense. And by the way, uh, Kentucky is one of the states that in terms of its pension liabilities is in the worst financial condition. And one of the states where, because of its failure to prepare for this in part, there's the among the highest applications for unemployment insurance. And so I can't understand why he would let his partisan ideology trump uh, the interests of his own state, which really is in very serious uh, financial difficulty, in part because it's been over time overly committed to his ideology. Uh, Larry, in the meantime, one of the big events of the week really was the cratering of the oil market with negative prices on WTI futures contracts. What do you make of that? Is that just a technical issue with we have some traders that didn't want to take delivery of the oil? Is there something more profound going on there? Well, I'm grateful that for as an economics teacher that now I can be talking about how prices can in extraordinary circumstances be negative. That wasn't something I'd uh, ever seen uh, before. It, the negative price reflected the precise dynamics of storage of particular categories of oil. That's not really fundamentally important. What is fundamentally important is that something that's basically good is happening. A cartel that over 40 years cost the world trillions of dollars is having difficulty maintaining its discipline. And as a consequence, consumers all over the world are benefiting. There was gasoline at close to $1.50 a gallon um, where I am a few days ago. That's not something that I would have ever expected uh, to see. Fundamentally, that is an opportunity for households it's an opportunity possibly to raise revenue by uh, taxing. This is something that is going to help our friends, the American middle class, and is going to hurt Russia and Iran and Iraq and, so and uh, Saudi Arabia, the countries listed in uh, your chart. So we should protect our supply potential and protect continued investment in new supply but we should not be working to push the price of oil up in the United States. We should not be working uh, to bail out oil, in oil investors who've had all kinds of windfalls at moments when the price is spiked up. And the one, the single most obvious public policy idea in this moment is that we should be filling up the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. God knows there was a day when we could have been paid $40 a barrel to put oil in that strategic uh, <laughs> petroleum uh, reserve. So I hope the government will be more active in accumulating oil and less active in fostering cartels going forward. Well, one last quick thought, Larry. Are you at all worried about energy independence for the United States? Is that a priority for us? Yes, although fundamentally there's one world and if 
we're energy independent, but Europe and Japan are not, and they somehow prove to be enormously vulnerable, and the price to them spikes, then the price to us uh, is going to spike. So yes, I think we have more influence right. and power in the world because we have a strong um, oil industry. And yes, I support developing that as long as we can do it in an environmentally sound right. uh, sound right. way. But I think right. this preoccupation right. with exact independence right. in a world where right. there's kind of a broad level right. of oil prices that affects everybody and is going right. to affect our allies, right. I wouldn't overdo that energy right. independence concept.